year came, I remember a very good friend of ours, John Rowland, who was a law player of Bonnie Fairman, and who visited us here on a daily basis. John was a bush club resident of this area, and this seat was made possible by the generosity of the Bonnie Fairman people and by the workmanship and expertise of our own men shed good here in the resource center. The seat will be unveiled by John's long-term friend and good comrade down through the years, Henry Hardy, and by John's nephew, who is travelled all the way from Wales, and we really appreciate that. England, thank you. I, England, thank you. I'd also like to say thanks to Francis Gallagher, our administrator here, who put up this whole enterprise and brought it to fruition today. I'd also like to hear from John's friends of the St. John of God's Centre here today. And after they have seated on bed, David Burton, a member of the community, will make a presentation of the remainder of the donation uh, to the church. To a lady from the St. John of God. So without further ado, I call on Henry mm -hmm. and John's nephew to our bed. Will I end on your descent? Right? Right. Yes, You're okay there, Henry? Yeah, are you? <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Grab the cloth. Oh, uh, wait, maybe John's been okay. Okay. Uh, Sorry. You okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, as Joe said, a lot of us remember John, I suppose, in our grown up time too, going around on the horse and cart, collecting the, the slops for the for the pig mat. And I see Joe there. Joe Coleman is a, was one of his assistants. And um, as we really been talking, you know, a shilling a week wasn't a lot of money then, but that's what they were paid. And then the <laughs> tremendous work that John went on to do then for the old folks collecting the turf on his hand cart. Uh, you'd always see John even, uh, pulling stuff up and down the road and and that. And you know, uh, there is a thing I was thinking to John about last night. Um, his flat cap, he, he'd always reminded me of Dimpler, the fella in England used to blow up the the um, the um, things in England and built steamrollers and all that with his flat cap. But um, John will never be forgotten because he wasn't only known in Ballyfermot. John was known Ireland wide, from Dorking, uh, Tally, everywhere. And I always met John on a Saturday morning up in the shopping centre up in Clondalk and we'd be sitting on the seat and we'd have a chat about our old times and what neighbours was gone and you and you know and um, a very thoughtful individual but he always sang me the song Henry there's a hole in the book <laughs> <laughs> no matter where I met him that was our introducing you know from John so I would just ask you for a couple of seconds just to think in your own mind the good times of John and say a little prayer for him and um, then we will continue with John's nephew um, saying a few words. Okay? Thank you. I've basically just come to thank everybody. I don't really like talking in front of people, but I've come to thank people from Ballyfermot because I don't think this place would ever be the same without seeing John walking up and down. Because when I, when I, every time I used to come and see John, I, I've been coming here every year for 50 odd years. And that it, when I knew how much he was loved by everybody, because when I would walk through John, everybody would think, who's this dodgy bloke <laughs> with him? And I couldn't get past anywhere without getting...
getting stopped like a roadblock. But I could see they were concerned for John's welfare. They loved John so much. They were saying, well, who is this little stumpy man? You know, and I would say after a while, because God bless, uh, Joe had passed away. Now, if you remember Joe, he would tell the whole world I was his nephew. But John was more interested about telling you about your history. And your father wore red shoes in 1936 and lived next door to Mrs. Phipps in 1982. Oh. So I said, please, John, can you tell these people I'm your nephew? You know? And after a while, it was great. But not only just Bally Fermat, but we would go to Kilmainham. He would always take me somewhere. And we'd go to Kilmainham. And the fellow, they said, sure, you're the mayor of Bally Fermat. <laughs> or you're John Nolan. And then John, uh, you know, before he died, two days before he died, he was singing The Wearing of the Green to me on the phone and Some Enchanted Evening. <laughs> so it was just crazy to suddenly find that he passed away. But, um, I just want, if anyone's got a, an interesting story they can come up and tell, but mine is just finally, we were at, he, he always, like I said, got something for me to do. And we went to Shamrock Rovers, the uh, Bohemians. Two instances, apparently they do not get on. <laughs> but John, I always thought Shamrock Rovers was on the other side. But I'm waffling, but during half time I said, John, let's have, I think Ireland were playing Turkey at half time. And I asked the fellow to take a photo of John and I. And the, one of the people, I think the fellow who asked who took the photograph, said, uh, are, are we from Turkey? <laughs> it was summer and I was around and John was And as we went back to our seats, as if you remember how John was, he said, Yayan, he said, me, he said, Yayan, do you mind me asking? And I, and I said, what, John? He said, why did that chap ask, did we eat turkey? <laughs> and he said, it's not Christmas. <laughs> and I think that sort of sums up John, and also, if they must be, because I remember, um, although Irish blood and Welsh father, so you've got this guy in Paris, Llewellyn, but my mother, Anastasia Nolan, married a Welshman. So that clears up that confusion. <laughs> but after the game, and then finally, because I, I, I love and miss John so much, the phone calls and everything, is when we finished that game, even all the coppers, or, or Garda, sorry, couldn't get past them. And I, I've got a bit of a colourful background, I didn't want to meet too many. But there, as we were leaving, there was some skirmishes between Bohemians. Do they not get on and Shamrock Rivers? But there was police with a helmet and a truncheon running past. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't have this in England. Just break up a mini riot. And this policeman stopped removed his helmet and said, John, are, you, are you, you okay? He said, and John said, who do I know you? He said, I'm Michael from um, Tala Police Station. He said, oh, yes, I do. And then, <laughs> and then he put his helmet back on, front and carried, and no, and he said, are you okay, meeting with I? So thanks everybody. I mean, I, you know, I can live in England and just love John. But you are the people that saw him every day or whatever. And so my mum is so, so chuffed. So thankfully.